Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful day here in England to take my first full look and drive in the brand new Land Rover Defender. I'm looking forward to finding out if the new car lives up to the hype. And today I've come down to Harwood's Land Rover in Edenbridge who have very kindly put together a pretty awesome display of Defenders old and new for us to take a look around in detail. Also, I can announce with Omaze there is an opportunity for one of you to win a brand new Defender, a 110 first edition, along with $20,000 in cash with all taxes and shipping included, with donations also supporting a good cause, in this case the Chill Foundation who help children in difficult times. Also, donations are being matched by an anonymous supporter of the Chill Foundation, up to $250,000. You'll find more about that at omaze.com slash shmi. Today though, let's find out what the Defender is like, take a good look through both of the models that we have here and some of the older cars as well and experience what it's all about. I've just been spending a little bit of time to learn about the new cars, to poke around them a bit, play with some of the technology, and I have to say, I'm already quite impressed. Now we've got two cars here. Both of these are the 110s. The 110 means the five door. They're the 90s if they're the three door shorter models. We've got a diesel, this is the D240, and a petrol, the P300. We'll go through all of the details in a second, but I just want to come up here because Harwoods have brought out this line of the older Defenders, and this is pretty much how the Defenders looked from the 1940s until a few Few years ago when they made a complete departure with the launch of the new model just at the end of last year at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Now the models we've got here include 290s, the short wheelbase three-door versions, we've got the XS and the LXV which is a commercial van, then we have the very special Heritage Edition, you can see at the front 1948 to 2015. This is a 110, it also features a number of twisted upgrades but there are quite a few design cues and remember this is very much intended to look like the original early Defenders that do actually carry through to the new car. For example, you'll notice the circular headlights inside the square frames. You'll notice the Alpine windows up on the side. You do have those as well carrying through. Lots of horizontal lines, a very boxy shape, but of course entirely modernized, a completely new setup. Now these are very highly equipped. The D240 that we have here, and there are two diesel models, the D200 and the D240. This comes as a first edition. This is actually the first edition, which means we have a high spec overall. The P300 is the SE, so it doesn't have entirely all of the options but it does have quite a nice interior. It's got the leather upgrade interior that we can take a look at as well. Let me come through towards the back though. They've got some unique touches to the design, like the square piece you have there that allows you to install various accessories. We've got the spare wheel hanging on the boot lid, but everything has been completely dated in terms of technology. You might notice this car is currently sitting quite low at the moment. The five door comes with air suspension as standard. This is in the access mode, so it sits down low. This car is in the normal ride height, but back here also more touches. Things like these squircle rear lights that you have in the same placement as on the older cars. The opening uh, sideways rear door but this thing has immense off-roading capabilities. Today I'm going to be driving it on the road, which is of course how many will end up being used. I think many of the 90s are more targeted towards farms and perhaps off-road driving, but what this can do in terms of ramp angles, and it gives you a great display of this actually on the technology inside, but also wading. It can wade into 90 centimetre deep water. That's mental when you think about quite how deep that would be. Somewhere up to here, maybe, this kind of height, which is a little bit crazy. So around the front, to talk more about the design, obviously the completely updated headlights. Still the circular lights inside the square frame and just grabbing the key quickly to blink them on to turn on the running lights. You can see how those illuminate. But the bodywork is very much actually the same almost shape, just curved and rounded in terms of the edges. You have that sharp horizontal line that runs all the way down the shoulder, just like on the older shape. On the bonnet, you have the bulge in the center carried through with what looks almost like somewhere you could stand on the car, but it's purely actually just a visual design piece. Obviously, all of the body panels are curved to be more aerodynamic, to be more up to date with the current times. But you notice these design cues, the Defender louvres that you have there, an updated style on the old kind of car. You've got the squared mirrors, those carry through as well, having the square shaped mirrors, even on the new cars, which obviously offer all the tech. You will notice we've got the 360 cameras on the underside. There's a great view, actually. The new software, the PIVI system that they've installed, which I'll show you through as well, is really, really good. As you come down, very square glass for the windows, 
this square panel which allows you to connect accessories for example a ladder or storage boxes those would go exactly on this mounting point is in a way reminiscent of having the sliding windows on the older car but a more modern take and obviously making the car even more usable it is quite long it sits just over five meters in length that's with the spare wheel mounted at the back you could take that off and make it about 25 centimeters or so shorter but let's come through to the interior of the car to start with this then the first edition which has the optional uh, foot steps installed as well keyless so it would unlock by pressing the button open up inside where it is quite plain to begin with but plain and in a functional rugged way when you start looking around in here you can see the digital dashboard waking up the digital central screen as well the whole dashboard this is a structural part these exposed uh, bolts that you can see around have a really cool finish to them the floor is actually water resistant if you've made a complete muddy mess of it you can take out the carpets and hose down the inside of the car that's the case in the front or also if we come through to the back of the car as well this is the five seat version the other car has the two extra seats behind which i'll show in a moment but the same down here carpets out hose down the car of course it's got a lot of practicality you can do the fold down of the seats you can actually fold the base forward first and then the top if you'd like to make it flat we're back here you've got a ra very rugged surface as you'd hope things like the usb and charging ports down there all have covers all part of the water resistant look and as i mentioned you've got those alpine pine windows to give you a feel of being able to look out from the inside as well as the full panoramic roof that's currently covered up to come around to the very back then in the rear here if you have the normal look electronic release on the boot lid back here you can lift this up you get some extra storage underneath along with your essentials but otherwise you have the very functional floor you can lower the car down with the air suspension you've got some lights and illumination and there's also a cover that you can install over the top across the back the boot itself actually has soft close um, he says i've just closed it properly but if you go almost closed it will pull itself in with soft close at the back and then this car as i mentioned has the full seven seat configuration so you get these extra seats which you can pull the cord here fold them forwards nice and easily if you'd rather have those down at the back and you get your flat floor back as well you could just fold down the middle section so practicality very much something of note back here you've got a full main socket you've got some cup holders for the passengers obviously this is fully prepared for the purpose everything that i think you would want to have on a modern car including you'll spot there's actually a camera up there on the fin for the rear visibility. So I'm gonna come through and show you some more of the inside of the car with this one. Actually, let's quickly have a look at the interior with the leather finish that we have in here. A very different look, a leather upgraded interior, uh, as you can see, all rather nice. Inside here though, to come through and take a step on board, as I said, this is the D240, 240 horsepower, 430 Newton meters just turn it into life to wake things up for a moment you've got a lot of storage space up here for example covered charging points and sockets pretty much everywhere you look we've got extra cubbies cup holders underneath this rubber mat you've got the armrest we can open that up back here you've got the the fridge that you can turn on to various different degrees going on there i think it's just telling me at the moment that the ignition is on and the door is open we don't need to know too much about that let's just close it Please stop chiming, there we go. And this is where I think it really excels. This system is brilliant. I'll go through this in detail when we do actually come back later, but there are so many things that you can do and it works from an SSD, so it's incredibly responsive, very, very quick. Look at the camera angles. Let's say if you're on road or off road and depending exactly what you want to see, the different views that you need out of the car and how quickly and responsibly this works the new pivy system that's going to find its way into various land rover i think jlr different models back here you know you've got your four by four modes yes i understand you can see all the different information altitude weight sensing information you've got a lot of different settings and you can obviously go through your different driving modes choose your comfort program grass gravel snow mud ruts sand rock crawling you've got all of this if you want to go out and use it it even tells you your vehicle dimensions if you need some extra information look your wading angles or your rather your angles of attack and angles of departures all very clever quite how much information that this actually gives you about whatever it is that you're doing or what you might want to have up on the screen you can also customize the driver dashboard if we go to the display you can change the layout all toggled through this on the left hand side of the steering wheel you've got various different screens whether you want one dial with a map 
you get the full satellite view. If you'd like to go with the full map display, bring up the media, assistant systems. There's so much configurable uh, elements and degrees to this that you can have exactly what you want the car to, to show you and do. Obviously when you're sat in here, feels, well, I guess like a, a big SUV for the most part. But I think I should take this now for a little drive and uh, get a feel for what it's like out and about. Okay, so Auto Gearbox, we are going for a short little first drive to head over to a particularly cool spot. Um, we're actually going to take two of the cars, so I am going to follow out the petrol car up ahead, and I think I'll do a little swap around. So there are a few different engines. You have the D200, the 200 horsepower car. This is the D240 with 240 horsepower, 430 newton meters. That's the P300 petrol with 300 horsepower and uh, 400 newton meters. And then there is also the six cylinder, which is going to be available soon. It's following about six months after the initial model. So out we go, and I will, be honest it's been quite a while since i drove a diesel car but obviously from the numbers i've even just told you the torque is where this comes into its own 430 newton meters of torque big number obviously helping if you're towing if you're off-roading if you're doing things often at slow speed where you want the power so it feels initially like a nice place you know like a premium suv right like a, a car that is well equipped feels good obviously sat really quite high up great view out of the front Great view out all round, actually, to be honest. Just conscious on these particularly narrow countryside roads. It is also quite a, a large machine, but you're aware of where it is. Nice view all around. So far, so good. Obviously, a diesel Defender is not trying to be a performance car. And from the suspension, when you're just driving it along, particularly on these bumpy roads at the national speed limit, 50, 60 miles per hour or so, you definitely feel it wallowing around a bit, but that's not what this car is necessarily targeting as its number one purpose. This is a car that you clearly can use for immense off-roading capabilities, but can also live with, can also use as a, as a comfortable, daily, all-purpose, practical, usable machine without having to worry about anything. With all of the different accessories that you can get and the fact that you can clean the floors and the fact that everything adjusts depending how much space you need inside the car, it, it just works. They are very big and looking at the car in front, when other SUVs come towards us, you realise, I mean, it's basically as big as a kind of transit van size thing and bigger than normal SUVs as a, yes, you kind of see from the other traffic. So. A little bit of a sense for, for what the size is like. I'm looking forward to driving the petrol as well. We'll do a quick switcheroo after we've gone to our, to our first spot. Exploring a little bit with the Defenders and we're going past cows. We're uh, having a little bit of a cruise. Very agricultural. Oh, oh, watch out, watch out. Got to be careful with livestock around. Um, we've had cows, we've had sheep, we've had all sorts. It's quite entertaining. This is more than natural habitat then for the Defenders that we've brought over from Harwards to this amazing view. We've got horse riders, cows, animals, all sorts around. But these two cars are currently parked in the extremes of the ride heights that you can have with the air suspension. So the diesel car here is in the access height mode where it sits right down to make it easier to climb in and out and put luggage in, that kind of thing. And then the petrol car is in the full off-road height mode. There are various different stages, but this is lifted up by six inches or about 15 centimeters, which gives it more ground clearance as well as a larger angle of attack and departure to help it if you were to go and explore the kind of terrain that we have back here. Also as mentioned you could be winning a new Defender like this, a Defender 110 First Edition along with $20,000 in cash with all taxes and shipping included through Omaze. The details are at omaze.com slash shmi. You'll find more information down below and over there plus all donations support a good cause. In this case the cause is the Chill Foundation who help to inspire youths to overcome challenges through board sports. Chill's programs give them an opportunity for learning and for growth. And also an anonymous supporter of the Chill Foundation is also matching all donations dollar for dollar up to $250,000. A great opportunity to support a good cause and possibly to win a Defender 110 First Edition along with $20,000 at Omaze. Do check out omaze.com slash shmi. For the time being though, I think it's time for me to to drive the petrol variant to get behind the wheel of this. Plus there are also some other details and things I need to show you when we hop back on board. So stay tuned, when we get back, we'll have a full look at more details of the interior. As we have a tiny light bit of off-roading, has to be said that the car out in front of us looks right at home. Looks pretty good 
where we're currently driving. So we'll have a little drive then in this. We did to put it in off-road, actually have it in low range. So I've just taken it out of low range. You can also opt to have a rear uh, diff lock. There are lots and lots of different options you can have. Obviously, first edition comes with a very high specification, the standard, but there's a lot of other things that you can choose to add to the car. So, petrol engine, it's instantly quieter. The diesel has that rumble and vibration and tractor-like noise in the background. I understand the benefits, obviously, with the torque, and you can feel the torque in that car a lot, but I'm more of a petrol guy, and I feel that instantly when I'm back in this. Obviously, you'd need to rev it out. This goes up more towards 7,000 RPM. The diesel engine was at five, and obviously, in the future, there is the potential for them to stick a big V8 in it and make, like, an SVR version of a Defender or something like that. I'm not quite sure exactly what they might do, but things we've seen in the past, and for example, the likes of the Project 8 that was alongside this when we began. On board then in this car, it just feels more normal SUV, you know, I think, and I've never driven it, like I said, but the old Defender must be a very different experience, its own thing, probably like driving an old G-Wagon, whereas this feels like driving, as we go past some sheep in the road, feels like driving a modern SUV. It feels like driving a modern car. Yes, it's gigantic. You're sat really, really high up. Even the truck in front carrying a skip, we are, well, that kind of height on the road, which is quite odd, actually. You have to be aware of that and the weight of the car. But it's comfortable, you know. And inside here, everything's really unique. It's very distinct for this car. And I always like that. It's not just generic run of the mill. They've made this whole interior its own thing. And to have these rugged, characteristics and styling cues and even those details just make you make the car more of an experience more of a an exciting thing itself and they start in the UK at about 50,000 pounds the top spec I think is around 80,000 at the moment so what you get for the money is also quite high level this is a really premium interior we've got a big steering wheel lots of controls the digital dash right through it everything around just works really well and obviously we've got the eight-speed ZF auto gearbox which has found its way into well, most of JLR's lineup for good reason. It's a great gearbox. You know, you find it in things from the F-Type to the various SUVs because it has so many different dynamic abilities and, and driving characteristics. And just looking out here, making sure we don't have any too big a blind spot, the other car has waited. So we'll let that pull out in front in just a moment. <laughs> Look at it there. Look at it off to the side. That looks completely normal and correct for a car like this. Off it goes riding out of the bumps very, very smoothly. And the other thing you will notice in a moment when he's on the brakes again is how the, the brake lights illuminate these squircles, these square circles that it has uh, all over the back of it. It just looks a little bit hardcore. The way you have those tail lights in the vertical lines makes it look like a you know an off-roading, military-esque type vehicle. Driving in here, though, is much, much quieter and calmer. This is, this is more my thing, to be honest, between the two. I suppose for long distance driving or for torque applications, it makes sense. Otherwise, this is the one I would choose. Part of me now would really like to take this to a proper off-roading environment. I expect its capabilities will be like the newest G-Wagon, just immensely beyond what you think a car should be able to do, going up surfaces that even walking up is actually a problem. But it's such a different ethos than the G-Wagon, where the G-Wagon is heavily reworked underneath the skin, visually it still looks like the traditional old car. This is entirely new, not just the engines, the suspension, the chassis, the whole setup underneath, but also the appearance. It gives these links back through the design and the styling, but it's a car that obviously has this controversial angle from the fact that they've done that. If they had tried to remake it like the old car, but entirely new underneath, there would probably be people who thought that it didn't have the charm and characters that it used to. So they've gone with reintroducing the Defender, making the Defender into something new for now, for the current world, hence these more SUV-like driving dynamics and style, you know, it makes sense completely for the car, but I'd love to actually see now what it could do, what this can actually get up to. It's, it's very cluster-free with controls, so I feel like the car is going to work out everything that you would need when you're in those off-roading environments and modes and you know you just press one button effectively it's very cluster free and it does it you don't have to worry too much about what exactly you're doing where you're going how it's set up and otherwise you just drive it like a normal car and you can you could just chuck stuff in here whether it's muddy bikes wellington boots whatever it is just throw stuff in and then hose it out later clean out the car and not worry about it 
it's rugged. All the materials up top feel very nice. Everything down below, plastic, easy, simple, what it needs to be for the purposes and intended use of the car. So it all makes sense. It does all make sense as we just cruise along. I think I'm looking forward to seeing as well what the more powerful versions in future are like and how or if it manages to translate into some dynamics as well because obviously when you have a car with massive off-roading abilities and it's very raised up making it dynamically capable as well is not the world's easiest objective it's a bit of a challenge but it just it just cruises it just wafts it's just easy to drive it's pleasant we do have a sport mode if you push the shifter to the left foot down yeah i guess even with 300 horsepower the car is big and heavy enough that it needs a bit more, a uh, little bit more power if you want to get properly on it. That's not what this thing is for at all. It's completely not, and I should probably not go down that path. Anyway, we're heading back towards Harwood. It's a big thanks to them for the opportunity to actually drive this car today to get a first feel for it. Obviously, for feeling what it's like to use as a normal car and trying not to obviously have too much of a comparison to the old one, having not got that basis to, to make any. Uh, comparatives between the two just driving it like this like a normal car like I guess many of them will be used for but knowing that it can also do that dual character of properly agricultural off-road hardcore usage as well as we line back up then with the older cars as well and we also have as mentioned the rather lovely Jaguar XE Project 8 which is quite a cool and very, very noisy, boisterous thing. At some point, I need to get behind the wheel of one of those. But let me come and show you a couple more things then about this car. And I will point out, it is also specced with the off-roading tires, upgrade package that you can have for the car. It's got the black pack. In fact, I think both of these cars do, which gives you the black exterior, uh, gloss black parts. But let's climb back inside here to show you a few rather cool details. So inside, the step in let's get it started back up obviously i touched a bit on the dashboard and how it's a structural component earlier i do like that engraving of the defender name badge that you have at the back but one other very very nice detail is the rear view mirror now obviously operating as a normal rear view mirror but if you do this it becomes a rear view camera from what i showed you on the fin on the back that's really quick easy and nice if let's say the rear of your car is stuffed full of luggage and you want to be able to see backwards it is that simple you can also opt to have a jump seat here like in the old defenders an extra seat that would fold away to be either an armrest or open up to be an extra seat it does seem to like chiming if you have the engine on and the door open so we do want to close that and we've got the dual dial display up at the moment but there are storage cubbies and spaces everywhere around here obviously we've got cigarette socket usb and usb c charging points um, i'm trying to work out how you would access all of this there's a wireless charging pad that's an option um, obviously like in the other car we've got the cooling available in here too looking around we don't have the full panoramic roof in this one but you do still have those alpine windows at the back from the rear seat. I'll go and see what the view back there is like in a moment. But I do very much find the amount of configuration and settings really quite impressive in here. How much you have access to and what you can bring up and what you can show and what you can do. Uh, I always love this kind of thing because well, it gives a great opportunity to play through many, many different settings and make the car exactly as you want it, whether that's you know your specific view or which bit of trip information you have in the middle there's a lot going on in there to play around with turn it back off for one second let me head just towards the even here look at the way even here the dashboard is open i think that's really really nice that bit of design i know lots of the design of the exterior is as i've said controversial but i do think the dashboard has worked out very well and then in the back of the car to actually step inside and see quite how much room there is look at this so the front seat is in my seating position loads of space loads of headroom as you would expect from a car that is quite this tall no problems up there and obviously you can fold the various parts of the seat down to make loading and whatnot a little bit easier with even more storage compartments and cubbies and things just all around and then back here you've got that feeling of a little bit of light that comes in from the windows over your head just a nice touch um, to have that i think it's a good option with a some armrest uh, cup holders 
in the center of the back, all of which you can move and fold and shuffle around independently. And as well as that, you will notice also here, they have the system for connecting up a tablet um, using a mounting bracket. That's always, I think, installed. You've also got a USB port for some charging. So things like that are all thought about, even the rear climate uh, and extra USB and cigarettes that you have back here all installed, all prepared, all ready, but everything feels quite tough, quite solid, as it needs to be with the intended use of the car and uh, how it's going to, how, how they're going to be used, I think. Um, just come around, just last look at, look at all the details really, taking it all in, this is the SE. So they start with the S, then the SE, then you get the HSE and the first edition, and then you get Defender X at the top for about 80,000, the fully loaded system. Press here. And here the car is lowering down the back. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can quite see that it's lowered. Basically, yeah, you can see that it's tilted, it's it's pivoted rearwards just to make it slightly easier to lift things up. You don't have to lift them quite as far uh, as you would. <laughs> you can see that instantly rising. Quite significant, actually, how much difference that makes because this is really quite high. In fact, I think it's letting me stick it even higher than it normally is. Look at that! It lets you from the switch in the boot, put it all the way up into full off-road mode. Didn't get quite up at the front. That's really uh, interesting that it lets you do that. Or back down to the normal height. How clever, convenient, very easy that it lets you do that. And set it to that warning triangle stored away in the back there. This is quite nice as well with the rear window, the way it's integrated in. Very heavy boot, but one that will stick at any angle, it doesn't swing open or swing closed. And like I showed earlier, with the soft close, to pull it back in afterwards. So how do these stack up to those, at least in terms of what I know? Does this live up to the hype? And I have to say, if you look at it as a car, a new model, and forget the old ones, it's a very, very all round, capable, well-equipped, nice car to drive. There are some quirks, you know, it's it's tall, it's heavy, it's and you feel that. I think there are some oddities about the design as well. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of how this square looks on the side. I think that's a little bit awkward for me um, and a couple of other things. It's just the Defender badge question, and this comes up with lots of models or companies that reintroduce a model. Obviously, does it deserve the name? I think it probably does. I think it needed an update and at the end of the day we could have said farewell to the old model, never seen it again and never been replaced in any form. But this sits and comes in nicely where maybe the uh, Discovery would have been. You know, it's, it's kind of that, that style of thing in the Land Rover lineup. The systems, the infotainment are going to find their way into all sorts of different models which will be good for the future as well. They work really, really well. So I'm also curious to hear your thoughts. Do let me know what you think about the new Defender and don't forget there is a chance that you could win a Defender 110 First Edition with Omaze. The link is down below omaze.com slash shmi with donations supporting a good cause in the form of the Chill Foundation as well. Do find out all about that. Winning the car along with $20,000 cash with taxes and shipping included as well. Omaze.com slash shmi. For today though, a big thanks to Harwood's Land Rover here in Edenbridge for the opportunity to come down to line up this amazing display of Defenders, the new and the old, and to take both of them out for a drive to get a feel of how they compare and to see what they're like out to drive as well. A first full look for me at the new models. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, appreciate your support an awful lot and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!